Welcome to Global Banking and Finance Review Awards. Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. Their awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, we're proud to present no less than three awards to AFAC, Islamic Finance, based in the United Arab Emirates. AFAC provides Islamic finance products and services approved by the AFAC Sharia Board. Excellent customer service is backed up by state-of-the-art facilities and modern electronic banking services. The three awards from Global Banking and Finance Review are Best Financial Statements Presentation UAE 2014 Best Customer Service Provider to Government and Non-Government Sector Middle East 2015 and Fastest Growing Islamic Finance Company UAE 2015 Recently returning to London to receive the awards His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Saud Al Qasimi the Managing Director of AFAC and CEO Dr. Mahmoud Abdullah. Dr. Abdullah, welcome to London. Thank you so much for, for coming back. It's good to see you again. And congratulations on, on your awards. It's uh, really excellent news. Uh, thank you. My pleasure to be again in London. And uh, thank you for your congratulations. Well, let's perhaps, if we can, talk a little bit about the work that AFAC has been doing in the, uh, since the last time we spoke here on Global Banking and Finance's reviews. Uh, and. Uh, Significant growth, huge success, which is wonderful news. 101% uh, uh, profit, which uh, is good. What, what do you attribute to that? What do you think has made that so successful? Well, uh, by grace of Allah, uh, we had very successful uh, uh, year 2014, and I believe uh, our team. Man, all times I I call uh, the Afaq team Afaq family. Uh, they are participating to have all this achievement. You know, year 2014, as you mentioned earlier, that ended with 101% comparing with uh, net profit of 2013. And all this, uh, uh, I can refer it to our strategic vision of board of directors, our part uh, team participation, our family participation on have all this plan and all this strategic vision. And I believe uh, if you want to maintain and sustain the, the growth, you need to keep the same strategy. You need to keep the same uh, plan. You need to maintain your team. Okay, as I said, family means you need more care. You need more uh, attention to this family, to this group, to have more achievement in future. And I believe, inshallah, with this strategic vision of the board of directors and AFAQ, uh, because uh, we have uh, put a plan for three years. Uh, to continue in the same growth, uh, to have more partnership with the government, with the semi-government, with the private sector. Uh, unless you have all these people, unless you have all this partnership, and unless you have all this agreement, you cannot continue in growth. Perhaps to expand on that, if we may, you know, uh, what do you attribute to the success? You've explained that. What's your plans going forward to ensure that that success continues? A hundred percent if you, you, you need to en enhance your, 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 your sectors, okay? Now we are focusing on this 2015 on the education sector. Education sector is a very sensitive sector. Uh, and we had created uh, two uh, subsidiaries of AFAQ, which is AFAQ uh, training institution. It's called IFM, an uh, Institute of Finance, uh, Finance and Management. and we create our uh, our own research center. It will going to have uh, input on that cross in, in 2015. Uh, beside that, we also create our own um, health education uh, health education uh, college, and uh, we'll try to have uh, more uh, contribution from different sector. And we arrange to have a different agreement with the local government of Dubai. Uh, such as uh, DED, new agreement with DED, and we'll try to enhance our previous and existing sector as well. So really, you're putting a, a great deal into the, the social welfare of your customers and clients as well. 
Can you explain to me a little bit more about uh, the differences between Islamic finance, the Islamic finance sector and conventional financing sector regarding such things as inflation or, of course, oil prices, which is significant in your part of the world? You know, all times uh, the differences between the Islamic financial institution and conventional institution that uh, all times Islamic financial institutions rely on assets, okay? It's more ethical, more moral, okay? And, you know, uh, there is restricted uh, uh, formulas and agreements and contracts uh, we deal with in Islamic financial institution. And even the supervision is different. You know, you have different supervision authority, such like Sharia Port. All this can contribute by all means to have the, dif the real differences between Islamic financial institution and conventional uh, institution. So that why, if, for example, now uh, all prices fall, there is no a, a, a real impact to the Islamic financial institution. Because if you deal with the assets, okay, it's not your uh, in, in, in conventional institution, just you deal with the interest and money, okay, and money creating money. But in, in Islamic financial institution, you rely on an impure assets. You're adding value to the economy. So if any, yes, there is an impact, but if you compare it with a conventional sector, you'll find it's, it's less, uh, less than that impact on the in conventional sector. It's, it's good to hear you explain that. Uh, let's talk a little bit now about the new services and products that you've brought in as a re result of what your clients probably have requested and need. Yeah. See, now, as I said, uh, according to the strategic vision of the UAE government and uh, in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi or as UAE general, they are now targeting the education sector, okay? So now, as I said earlier, uh, we create our own subsidiary for education sector and we're going to have our first uh, primary school uh, maybe in 2015, 2016. But at the same time, uh, we create our own uh, financing program for education, you know, in, in, in terms of uh, universities, in terms of uh, PhD and in, in master degree. All this, we're going to have a s different agreement with different universities to provide their uh, students and their, and their uh, uh, members uh, different kinds of investment, uh, or different kind of uh, financing. Uh, beside that, <coughs> also, as I said, now we 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 we, we sign a different uh, and so many agreement with different institution over the globe regarding providing new certificate training certificate or professional certificate uh, recently we signed with the certified public accountant in uh, in pakistan to provide the first islamic uh, certified public accountant for the globe uh, those professional certificate I, I i believe this subsidiary ifm uh, Institute of Finance and Management, mm -hmm. we're going to have uh, or enhance our experience for education sector and uh, more focusing also in health uh, sector also. And we're going to provide different uh, financing formulas. Now we start with uh, medical equipment and this giving us new experience, to have new experience for our team and for our company to provide the finance for the medical and uh, health care uh, uh, sector. Well, that's excellent news. Uh, perhaps we could turn now to SMEs, small to medium enterprises. What would you say the challenges were for them within the the Islamic uh, countries and the uh, 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 and also Arab countries? Yeah, the SME problems. Uh, first of all, up to now, there is no agreed definition for SME in Islamic in Islamic countries or in Arab countries because. Or maybe in the globe, because people looking for SMEs for from different perspective, sometimes for productive cycle or for a manpower sector or for capital uh, sec uh, capital uh, areas. So first of all, we need to agree what is SMEs, what is the real definition of SMEs. Second, uh, one of the the important challenges first the SME sector in UAE. Uh, I believe the lack of financing, lack of support, okay? Because unless you have the proper definition, no one can support. And in terms of logistic, in terms of financing, in terms of providing information and human resources. 
all the, 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 the human resource in, 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 uh, in SMEs is not organized yet. There is lack of corporate governance for this sector, for example. And I, I maybe recently I, 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 I wrote a paper regarding SMEs. And I, I, I suggest to the government to have a proper corporate governance for this sector because it's a very important sector. Believe it or not, in, in, in UE, 42% of the old companies is SMEs. If we, from different perspective, if you take the, the uh, capital uh, basis or you take the manpower basis, there is 42% of the companies is under uh, SMEs umbrella. So we need to more focus and more concentrate to have different uh, support. And I, I believe if we provide the logistic services, for example, uh, SMEs face the overhead expenses. Unless you have a proper minimized overhead, no one can continue because with the competition, with their productive production cycle, you will face a lot of problems unless the government or semi-government provide kind of logistic services for the SMEs, they cannot survive. So we need, first of all, to define what is the SMEs, second, to have a proper corporate governance for those uh, companies, and third, I believe if we try to minimize overhead expenses for those companies, they can survive in, in future. They sound like quite a lot of challenges, actually. Would you say that the future was optimistic for them? Uh, I believe, uh, because now even uh, for uh, new COVID uh, uh, commercial law issued recently in UE, they, they try to, to provide new definition for LLC companies, <coughs> or uh, they put uh, guidelines uh, general guidelines for corporate governance for small or medium uh, sector. Well, you mentioned the new commercial companies uh, law that's just been brought in in the UAE. Uh, tell us a bit more about that and what the advantages might be going forward. Yeah, uh, as I said, all times you need to keep developing, improving the, the legal uh, infrastructure in any country. And, you know, now with the crisis and the global problem, political problems, you know, you need to have a confidence over uh, foreign uh, investors. So <coughs> I believe now the, the, the recent or the new commercial law issued uh, recently in UE will, hands, uh, will enhance the, the, the investor, the foreigner investor confidence over the infrastructure, legal infrastructure in, in UE. Second, <coughs> for the first time, Commercial law focus on the financial Islamic financial institution in terms of the Sharia board, the, the definition of the Sharia board, mandatory to have any any Islamic financial institution to have their Sharia own Sharia board. What is the uh, the guidelines for this Sharia board to work with? Uh, and the most um, important things the, the 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 new commercial law focus on who is responsible for LLC companies or for shareholders companies. They assign the responsibility for the managers or for the chairman, and they define it very, very uh, sharp. And what is the responsibility? What is the authority? What is the responsibility? Before, th there is a lack of the definition. But now, with the, the new version of the commercial law, I believe the, the confidence will be enhancement and more invest investment from outside will uh, try to, to, to be in UE. So hopefully that, that's a very positive uh, decision going forward. Uh, looking at um, your own activities, AFAC activities, regarding the promotion and development of the Islamic financial sector, what have you actually done to promote that? Um, recently AFAC uh, uh, awarded from uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin, bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President, ruler of Dubai, with um, excellence award and we got the, the best uh, trademark uh, uh, in service sector with his presence, his highness presence. Also now, uh, recently AFAQ also uh, got A- minus from uh, Islamic International uh, Rating Agency. All these together can give kind of promotion 
of Islamic financial institution or for Afaq uh, specifically. And it's, it's, it's a matter of confidence. You know, you deal with the community, you deal with the clients, customer. They need to see what the, the reality of your activities. So uh, all these independent uh, bodies, such like uh, Dubai government or uh, ERA, which is uh, Islamic International Rating Agency, give this kind of confidence to our clients. And, and you know, this uh, as part of our future plan, our strategic plan, uh, in terms of issuing new sukuk, uh, convertible sukuk, in, in, in near future, when we got the, 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 the necessary approval from the related uh, authorities such like a central bank or uh, minister of economy. And also we try to develop the first real, fund, real estate fund in, in UE uh, from the private sector. All this and, uh, can, can contribute by different means to promote AFAQ or promote Islamic financial institution because the experience of Islamic financial institution or the experience of AFAQ since 2006 up to 2015, we need to give more light what is our experience, what we did in the past, what is our uh, strategic few, uh, plan for the next uh, few years, inshallah. It's fascinating. It sounds like it's going to be very interesting as the, as the years roll on, and especially in this year, 2015. Dr. Abdullah, thank you so much for coming Dr. here today. Thank and you. indeed, congratulations on the awards uh, for AFAQ as well. Thank you for your, this um, uh, nice interview. And I'm very pleased to be here in London and to have the second view with yourself. And, and, and this is my honor to be here with the Global uh, uh, Financing Review for the second time. And I, I hope, inshallah, next year we'll be again in London and to have another interview and to mm, give more focus on our achieve, uh, achievement for 2015. That's excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.